The Boston Bruins fall in game three against the Florida Panthers once again for the second game in a row. They once again were brutally outshot, and we're going to be touching on this game here. What went wrong? You know, just the whole game in general, as well as a brutal injury update regarding Brad Marchand. And then kind of what's next? You know, the Bruins are in a tough situation, being down 2-1 and two brutal losses. So we're going to be talking about what this team needs to do. But before we get into all of this news, we know that 81% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all of your Boston Bruins news, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit the sub button. Join me here as we cover this team in the rest of this playoffs, as well as into a very busy offseason where we're going to see a lot of changes. But like I said, let's get straight into our first topic here, which is the Bruins are in trouble. You know, I hate to say it. I've said it before, but the Bruins are in are in a pretty a pretty tough spot here after dropping Game 3 to the Florida Panthers in very similar fashion to Game 2. But I'll put the box score here first of all. As you can see, there's not too much action going on here in this game. Some pretty all right games from some players. Not going to go too too deep into this because we know what happened. We know which what the the whole storyline of this game was. And we're going to see some changes in Game 4 um, very likely. So just wanted to pull this up. Show you up. Jeremy Swayman, another tough game, but once again, not too much on him. Brad Marchand, only 10 minutes time on ice after he left the game due to an injury on what was a sucker punch from Sam Bennett. And from uh, from the rest of the lineup, you know, Andrew Peak had his return to the lineup. Plus one, can't really complain about that, but you know, ideally, you'd like to get the win. Playoff performer Jake DeBrusque, one for one. We're at one and one, one goal, one assist here in this game. But apart from that, not too much action on that front. But pulling up the stat card, as you don't like to pull this up just to kind of show game performances in a in a, a statistical manner, I guess. Don't really always show uh, how they did perform on the from the eye test, but on the stats, the analytics, this is the best way to pull it up. Mason Lowry, Jake DeBrus, David Pasternak, Charlie McAvoy highlighted this one. A very uh, a pretty good game for Charlie McAvoy here. After what we had seen from his uh, his performances in this playoffs. This was one of his better ones, but Derek Forbert, Brandon Carlo, uh, the lowlights on this list. Derek Forbert making his third game of the playoff, or in his third game of the playoffs. Third game after returning from injury, and it was not the best once again from him, but either way, we move on. We have to go into the next game. The uh, a, new, a new idea, some new ideas, some new thoughts, some new plans, I guess you could say, and whether that means Derek Forbert out of lineup, bringing Parker Wotherspoon back in, I don't really know. You know, the Bruins got a lot to think about here in this game and heading into game four and whatever they choose to do, they really have nothing to lose at this point. They're not supposed to be here and they're not supposed to win this series. So they got to go into this continuing as the underdogs. But let's head on to our second topic here, which is the brutal injury update from Brad Marchand, as I'm sure you know, and that BS call, which was, or I should say, no supplementary discipline for um, Sam Bennett here in this game. But this is a tweet here I found from someone named Bradley, and this is exactly the way that I, I think that a lot of people saw this play run out. It's truly crazy how Bennett does throw that fist slash butt end into Marshawn's head here. I can't believe TNT didn't pick up on this. I know it would have been the headline central if roles were reversed, and this is absolutely correct. You know, whether or not you think this is a, uh, a sucker punch, whether you think this is the hit that followed through to the head or not, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into that. I think it's a bit of a both. I think it's a bit of an unlucky situation, but that hand definitely got into the head of Marshawn, whether or not it was intentional. And I'm not going to touch too much on that, like I said. But if this was Marshawn throwing that hit on Sam Benham, the media would have gone crazy. It really shows the bias of how many media corporations, how many, you know, TSN, whatever, ESPN, Sportsnet, whatever you watch, consider Brad Marshawn to be, you know, a dirty player. And you know, he has that history, but that's gone now. That's not the Brad Marchand that we see anymore. After the World Cup in 2016, Brad Marchand has really turned his complete game around, and we know that because he's the captain of this team now. And he's a very good leader, and that's correct, though. If this, if the roles were reversed, Brad Marchand would be, you know, on the grill. He would be getting completely torn apart by just about everybody, and even is currently for receiving that hit. So, just complete and utter nonsense, and I have a... Kind of a mindset that that is the reason that there was no supplementary discipline on this play from Bennett's punch. Um, and this is what David Pagnon said. Both sometimes uh, something the ref could and slash did deal with. All is fair in love in playoffs, it appears. But, you know, from Derek Ryan's dick tap or Sam Bennett's punch, you know, either way, something could have came out of it. A fine. I don't know if it's suspension worthy. 
I think a fine definitely should have been in place, however, but, you know, we've seen nothing, and I'm thinking that a lot of that is due to uh, it being Brad Marchand on the receiving end of it, but if we lose Brad Marchand, who is considered now day-to-day -day after this hit, this is going to be a tough loss for the Bruins. Brad Marchand's been one of the better players, whether or not it's on with the puck in his, on a stick, whether it's, if it's him on the ice, but his role is integral on this team, being that guy that nobody wants to be on the ice against, being the guy that's always trying to get under your skin, draw a penalty here, take a, uh, you know, a draw a penalty there. And he's really just the leader on this team that this team needs right now. And everybody sh right at this point should try and model their game after him it, the, at this point in the series. Because Brad Marchand is the type of guy, as I said, that you don't want to play against. He's really going to try and get under your skin. He'll make you take a penalty. And from what we see, from what we've seen with the Bruins right now, I think that's what this team is going to have to try and do. Try and, you know draw some penalties, work on the power play, but either way, we need to we need to do something here, and this will be a tough loss if he's out for um for game four. But let's move on to our final topic here of the day. And kind of just a little broad section. So what's next? What's going on for game game four here? What what do the Bruins need to do? And like I said, I don't really know right now and I don't think Jim Montgomery or this Boston Bruins team does either at this very moment. We have seen uh, I don't have it as a tweet here, but Linus Allmark was first first off the ice here today in practice, leading to him potentially starting a game four. Um, but one thing that I know we can do right now is limit the penalties. The Florida Panthers scored four power play goals last game, really showing the, the power, the strength that that team has, how good they are on the power play, on even strength as well. And it really shows how this team can take control of a game if you lose it. And that's very been evident in game two and three. Another thing is, you know, we need to get more shots in the first period. We need to do what we did in Game 7 against the Maple Leafs. Put more pucks on net from any scenario. You can't go out into the second period with three shots on net in the first. They were being outshot, I believe it was 12-3 to or 15-3 to here in uh, the first period last game. That can't happen. You need more shots on net. But you know, that's just the, the top of the line. You know, there's a lot of things that go deeper and deeper that you're going to need to work on. But I do have this screenshot here from an athletic article that says kind of the changes for game four. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing out, but if you do want to pause and give it a read, absolutely uh, go for it. But I'll just read the first uh, paragraph here. It says, it's too early to be able to talk about changes, Montgomery said. We have to do our due diligence and look at the game again, see who is executing and who is playing with effort that you media people have asked about. Kind of sort of blink if you miss a third period momentum change the Bruins hope to take into game four. And that's really what they're going to need to start out with. You know, the same way we did in game six, going into game seven of last series, take this game, uh, this third period of game three, start it the same way as game four, get some shots on net, swing the momentum in your favor, and try and hopefully go out and get a win. And at least split the series in Boston, head back as a 0-0 series to Florida. You know, that's really the only thing the Bruins can do at this point, other than making some deeper changes here and there. But right now, we have no indication of what it could be. Jim Montgomery hasn't really said yet, but I'm nearly positive that we will see some changes here in Game 4. Whether it be Linus Allmark, which it's seeming to be, or whether some other roster moves, I, I honestly have no idea right now. But let me know what you think in the comments below, because we are going to have a very interesting rest of this series from another standpoint. And I likely, possibly could be streaming tomorrow, Mother's Day in Newton in North America. So, potentially, but I'm not quite sure. But other than that, let me know what you think about this whole... Um, this whole shebang, I guess you could say, from the Bruins' standpoint here, the loss about Brad Marchand, and what do you think they need to change for Game 4? I'm going to be talking about that again here in another video soon, so, like I said, let me know what you think, but that's all I got here. If you did enjoy, make sure to give the video a like. Hit the sub button as well if you did enjoy. Let's me know you're enjoying this, uh, the news and the content, but, like I said, that's all I got here. I'm signing up. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.